My family had several unusual traditions. For example, every year, Mom repainted the house in a new shade of pink. We also decorated a palm tree for Christmas. But that wasn't the weirdest thing about our family. All of the women in it kept long hair. That's why I never cut mine until I was 15. It's crazy, right? Hi, I'm Alice, and this is the Private Diary channel. Hit that like button and let's get to it. My parents were quite wealthy. When I was a kid, they bought me dozens of expensive dolls and fashionable dresses. Huh? However, I was more interested in cool huh. action movies in which mm. brave cops caught the bad guys. I wanted mm. to be just like them. Mr. Dinosaur, you are under arrest and have the right to remain silent. I'm the law here. It horrified my mom. <gasps> After all, she was very <sighs> feminine. I suspected that huh? she didn't take off heels even in the shower. Huh. I'd also never seen her without makeup. Alice, what are you doing? Playing a cop? I want to be a sheriff. Don't even think about it, honey. That's not an appropriate career for a woman. She was convinced that as a girl, I had to look good to find a rich husband and never work. She basically wanted me to be her copy. That's why she taught me ways to look good ever since I was a kid. I didn't like it, but I didn't have much choice because mom was bossy and always made dad take her side. I want to eat this yogurt, not make a hair mask out of it. Don't be silly. You need to look pretty if you want boys to like you. Your dad fell in love with me because of my gorgeous hair. Isn't that right, dear? Well, looks aren't the only thing that matters. What was that? Um, I meant to say, listen to your mother, Alice. See what I mean? Dad never stood up to her. <laughs> I dressed like Barbie and acted like a lady when they could see me. However, I secretly kept watching action movies and dreaming of being a cop. Tremble in fears, scoundrels. There's a new sheriff in town. What are you doing? Um, putting on makeup. That's my girl. It got worse as I grew older. The long hair made my life difficult. It looked amazing, of wow. course, and everyone admired it. I would give anything to have such gorgeous hair. You have no idea how hard it is to take care of this mane, though. I wasn't exaggerating. I had to get up a couple of hours earlier than I would have otherwise to wash, dry, and style my unruly hair. Sometimes it got so tangled, I had to ask the maids to help me comb it. Raise your hands if you ever got caught in the rain. The humid air was my biggest enemy because it made my hair look like a bird's nest. I wanted to cut it. However, I couldn't do that because of my mom. My parents hardly ever let me go anywhere alone. But sometimes, I would sneak out and explore other neighborhoods to cheer up. One day, I got on the first bus I saw and drove to a beautiful park. I got off the bus and felt my heart skip a beat. There was a gorgeous guy running around the park. I couldn't take my eyes off him. It was like the stranger moved in slow motion, and the sweat stains on his clothes shimmered beautifully in the sun. Um, I'm not good at romantic stuff. What I mean is, I wanted to swoon. But then, something terrible happened. The bus doors closed, and I realized with horror that my hair got stuck between them. The driver was about to hit the gas. I started to scream and wave my arms in a panic. Wait, wait! That gorgeous stranger ran up to the bus, knocked on the driver's window, and asked him to open the doors. Phew! I was saved! Thank you! I was afraid my dumb hair would go to the next stop without me! <laughs> I'm Alice. And I'm Teddy! Your hair isn't dumb, it's beautiful! Then, he said he was thirsty and offered to buy me a soda. Mom says sweet drinks are bad for the figure. Uh, does that mean no? It means I'd gladly drink a whole fountain of soda! <laughs> We walked and chatted for a long time. Teddy said that he was training in the park every day because he wanted to get into a police academy and follow in his parents' footsteps. Wow, I wanted to become a cop when I was a kid, but mom thinks that's not an appropriate job for a girl. She even forbids me from cutting my hair because of our stupid family traditions. We hung out some more, and then Teddy walked me home. At parting, he said I should talk to my parents and convince them to give me more freedom. I knew it was useless, but decided to try anyway. That evening, I came up to my mom and told her how much my long hair was bothering me. The world won't end if I get a new haircut. You will look like a boy if you cut it. Forget about it and go to your room. Ugh, it was like talking to a wall. I wasn't surprised that was all she had to say on the matter. Teddy and I kept texting each other. Sometimes I even managed to sneak away and go for a walk with my new friend. One morning, I woke up with a terrible <sighs> migraine. At first, I thought it would go away soon. Unfortunately, the next day, the pain became unbearable. I told my parents about it, and my mom immediately brought me to a hospital. They examined me and ran some tests, but couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Still, I wasn't getting better. We kept going to different doctors. However, none of them managed to diagnose me. I couldn't bear the pain any longer. Mom found the best doctor in town and brought me to her. I see. 
Alice, wait in the hallway while I talk to your mom. I shrugged and left. Was I finally going to get help? A minute later, I heard my mom yelling furiously at Dr. Miller. What? You're a charlatan. I've never ever heard anything so stupid in my life. With those words, she stormed out of the office like an angry bull and told me we were leaving. Oh wait, what did she say to you? Nothing, forget it, we'll go to another clinic. I won't rest until you get a normal diagnosis. Hmm, she was obviously hiding something. But to be honest, I was getting sick of all the hospitals, so I asked for a break. Luckily, the painkillers helped a little. Huh? That evening, Teddy asked me how I was feeling. Let's go cycling. I'm sure the fresh air will do you good. What a great idea. We agreed to meet in the park, and the next day, I sneaked out and headed there. I was riding my bike and looking forward to hanging out with Teddy. My hair was flying in the breeze. Then, my phone vibrated in my pocket. Without stopping, I took it out and read the text from Teddy. Sorry, Alice. Mom had to leave for a work emergency. I need to look after my little brother, so I won't be able to come. Damn it, what a shame. But that wasn't the worst thing that happened to me that day. I was distracted by the phone and didn't see my brake get loose. It got tangled in the bicycle chain and I fell over. Ah! Ouch, what a grand fiasco. I tried to pull my hair out to no avail. There was no one around to help me. My migraine was getting worse again. Tears stung my eyes. I was so sick of it all. It was time for desperate measures. I had a travel bag with some tools with me. I pulled a pair of scissors out of it and mercilessly cut off my hair. It was only after a few minutes that I realized what I had done. Mom will have a heart attack when she sees me. Well, there was no way back. I came home and told my parents about what had happened. I almost went deaf while mom shouted at me. She said I was a disgrace to our family, the first girl to break our tradition, and that no one would love me now. She kept going, and it seemed she would never run out of steam. You will stay in your room until your hair grows back. I forbid you from going anywhere but school. Is that clear? Why are you so obsessed with my hair? Dad, come on, this is ridiculous. Mom glared at my dad, and he mumbled that I shouldn't argue. I was about to go bonkers. I thought I would be stuck at home, feeling sick. But guess what? The next day, I felt much Whoa. better. Great, even. Living with short hair was so much easier. My head felt light like a balloon. I didn't even care that mom was glaring at me like I was a traitor. And by the way, she was wrong when she said no one would like me if I had short hair. I sent a selfie to Teddy and he loved my new look. I didn't think you could get any more beautiful. One day, I stopped by an ice cream shop on the way home from school. While I was standing in line, someone stepped on my foot. Oh, excuse me. Oh, you're Alice. I'm Dr. Miller, remember? Right, how's it going, Doc? She looked at me in amazement and then asked me if my strict mother had let me cut my hair after all. Now, hold on a minute. What? Didn't she tell you? It turned out that Dr. Miller had realized that my migraines were caused by my heavy hair. She told mom I should cut it. Instead of thanking her, mom lost her temper and called the doctor a charlatan. So that's what it was all about. That pissed me off. I couldn't just let that slide. So I came home and confronted my mom. You knew I was in pain, but you let me suffer because your traditions were more important to you than my health. You're too young to understand how important this is for your future. We spent a long time shouting at each other. Each of us hoped dad would take our side, but he tiptoed out of the room so we wouldn't drag him into our fight. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. That's when I realized that I didn't have to always listen to my mom. I decided to follow my dreams instead, so I ran to my room and called Teddy. I need a favor. Name it. I'll do my best. I told him about the way mom treated me and that I wanted to follow my dreams. And then I asked him to train me a little so that I could get into the police academy too. My friend happily agreed. After that, I threw all my old clothes out of the wardrobe. Goodbye, uncomfortable heels. Long live cozy sneakers. Mom was shocked by my new look. She said I looked like a boy. I finally felt comfortable in my own skin though. Teddy and I met every day after school. We trained together and my friend showed me all sorts of self-defense techniques his parents had taught him. It helped us grow even closer. Since I was on a roll, I took a risk and asked him out. I've been meaning to tell you I like you for a while now. Things were going so well, but one day, mom said that I was completely out of control and she knew how to fix it. You left me no choice, Alice. I'm sending you to a girls' boarding school. You're finally going to learn how to be a real lady. Now get in the car, our plane is taking off soon. It was nuts. She didn't even let me say goodbye to my friends. I only had the time to text Teddy that I was going to the airport. Mom immediately snatched the phone out of my hands. Gadgets are forbidden in your new school. It made my blood boil. I couldn't believe mom was doing it to me. Soon, we arrived at the airport. Mom left to talk to the staff at the check-in counter. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I tried to figure out what to do. And then I saw a guy creep up to my mom and snatch her purse before running away. 
He stole my purse! Stop him! I didn't hesitate before chasing after him. I felt like an action movie heroine. It was such an adrenaline rush. Stop in the name of the law! My catchphrase was still a work in progress. Soon, I caught up to that scoundrel. We were in some sort of dead end, and I realized how high the stakes were. So, I used a move Teddy had taught me. Needless to say, the thief was stronger than me. I thought that I wouldn't be able to return my mom's purse after all when a gorgeous policewoman came to my rescue. She easily and gracefully handcuffed the bastard. Today is clearly not your day, buddy, because I am on duty. What a cool catchphrase. What? I mean, uh, thank you for your help, ma'am. At that moment, my terrified mom finally caught up to us, took back her purse, and hugged me. Sweetie, don't you dare take such risks anymore. Now come on, we're late for boarding. Then, someone shouted my name. It was Teddy. It turned out that he had got my message and driven to the airport as fast as he could to say goodbye. <sighs> uh, I was almost too late. Mom, what are you doing here? I was drinking coffee when I saw this brave girl deal with that scumbag. Wow, it turned out that officer was Teddy's mother. It was clear he admired her. My friend hugged me. This brave girl is my girlfriend, Alice. She's going to be a cop too. I turned red as a tomato and my mother's eyes bugged out. She uh -huh. pulled me away from Teddy and dragged me away. Unbelievable, I told you to forget about that stupid dream. You can't be a cop, you are a girl. Sorry, ma'am, but you are quite wrong. Strong women can do anything they set their minds to. Your daughter is fearless and determined. It seems what she really needs is your support. She's right, mom. Women can be more than just beautiful. They make excellent doctors, politicians, and rescuers. Let me choose my own path. For the first time, I saw my mom hesitate. Had I finally got through to her? She thought for a long time, but eventually gave in. You're right, Alice. I probably shouldn't impose my beliefs on you. We're not going anywhere. I squealed with joy and Whoa. hugged her. Teddy's mom led the criminal to her car. But before that, she had some parting words for me. Alice, you were very brave today, but you shouldn't do that again. Don't put yourself in danger until you learn how to deal with the criminals. I promise, ma'am. As you see, things took a wild turn. I'm still dating Teddy, and we are getting ready for the police academy. Has my mom changed? Nope. She still often grumbles that I look like a guy. But what matters is, she no longer stands in the way of my dreams. That's enough for me. Does your family have any unusual traditions? Tell me in the comments down below.